Tell us your name and tell us about your project. Well, my name is Edwin Hubble, and I worked with the enormous 100-inch Hooker telescope to study the Andromeda Nebula, which was actually known to be a patch of light containing stars which we identified as CFID variables that actually vary in brightness in a pretty regular way. What were you guys trying to do with that? Now, what we were trying to do with this project was to actually find out the answer to the question of what nebulae truly were. Now, were they embryonic solar systems forming? Or were they island universes like our own Milky Way galaxy? We wanted to do this by proving just how far away the Andromeda Nebula truly was from our own Milky Way galaxy, which would actually disprove the spiral nebulae debate. In turn, this would disprove the Andromeda was actually part of the Milky Way, which would also disprove Harlow Shapley, which he was actually known for measuring the size of the Milky Way. Where did the project or experiment occur? Now, after arriving at Mount Wilson in California, that's where I actually began experimentation. Here, I used the newly constructed huge 100-inch Hooker telescope to actually conduct my research. What other significant events were happening around the world at this time? Well, around my time, in 1901, we actually see the Nobel Prize being founded by the Swedish inventor Alfred Nobel. In 1914, we see World War I beginning, uh, which actually I served in. 1921, we see Albert Einstein receiving the Nobel Prize in Physics. 1939, we see the Nazi invasion of Poland actually triggering the start of World War II. 1945, we see the U.S. deploying the atomic bomb to actually end World War II. Who else was involved in the project? Well, there was one other person involved in the project, and... It was actually my assistant who actually worked at the observatory. His name was Milton Hummison. What was your role in the project? Well, I actually worked as the main astronomer, observing the Andromeda Nebula and using the publications of various researchers in relation to my own research, such as like the CFID variables and so on, to prove my observations were actually true. What impact did your project have on the physics community? Well, using my knowledge of the CFID variables and the research of Henrietta Swan Leavitt, we actually proved that the CFID variables obey a period luminosity relationship, which I was able to use this to determine just how far the stars were from the Andromeda Nebula. After meticulous calculations and further observations, we determined that the distance to the Andromeda Nebula were to be almost 1 million light years, which was far too far from the Milky Way galaxy, and that there were in fact other galaxies separate from our own. I mean, this was groundbreaking in the physics community. I mean, everybody believed that the Milky Way was only one galaxy, like this, it was the only galaxy, and it was actually absolutely astonishing. But really, the next question to be asked was if these separate galaxies that we just discovered, we have just discovered, were stationary, or were they actually moving? Now, using the evidence found by Vesto Slipher at the Lowell U Obser Observatory in Arizona, which actually entailed the concept of the redshift of galaxies which is actually a measure of the recession of speed, which is when visible light, which has been emitted or reflected by an object, is moved to the not as energetic end of the electromagnetic, electromagnetic spectrum as it goes away from the person observing it. Now, using this, I was actually able to create my own law, which was now known as Hubble's Law, which means that the greater distance between two galaxies actually equals the greater relatives actually equals a greater relative separation speed. 
which proved that the universe was indeed in expanding. This actually went hand in hand with Einstein's equations of general relativity for an expanding space. That he was actually grateful for my work in helping him. I mean, previously, Einstein believed that the universe must be static and infinite in some way. It also proved Alexander Friedman's theory in 1922 of an expanding universe. Was astronomy something you always wanted to do? Growing up, I considered myself to be an athlete. In high school, I earned a lot of awards. I got a lot of awards in track and field, as well as a record for the high jump. But then I went to the University of Chicago, and that's where I studied mathematics, astronomy, and philosophy. But I also played for the basketball team there. Uh, after I graduated, I actually spent the uh, next few years getting my master's from Oxford University, which here I studied law, there I studied law and Spanish. However, uh, I, I really believe that my strive to do astronomy never really left me. So once I went back to the United States, I actually pursued that. I became a graduate student at the University of Chicago. I actually stared at the stars at their Yerkes Observatory. Uh, I eventually got to my doctorate from there and went to work at Mount Wilson Observatory where I, this is where I made all of my discoveries. So overall, yeah, I truly feel as though astronomy has always been something I've been called to do.